I think uh, that the development of AI poses um, immediate challenges and long-term challenges. Uh, some of the long-term challenges are very hypothetical. We don't really know if they will ever, ever materialize in this way. But in the short term, I think AI poses uh, some regulatory challenges um, for society. They pose uh, ethical challenges. And there are also challenges uh, when it comes to the marketplace, uh, in particular the labor market. So I like um, to think about the example of driverless cars, because not because I'm, I'm only interested in that problem, but I think it exemplifies many of the questions that we will face in many uh, uh, applications of AI in the future. We recently ran very large surveys of people's preferences over what a self-driving car should do if faced with a difficult ethical uh, question. Now, um, and the question is, what values, what are the principles that we want to embed uh, in those cars? And uh, what we found, interestingly, is that there is a broad cultural variation in, in the values that people consider important. Um, so in some cultures, um, people seem to think the car has a bigger duty towards its owner, whereas in other, culture, uh, other cultures, um, uh, people seem to think that the car has a duty to society to minimizing harm in total. We're still uh, analyzing the data and we don't have conclusive findings yet, but I think it's very interesting that as soon as we began uh, probing into this, uh, these sorts of questions, we very quickly encountered an important sort of anthropological uh, dimension here, um, or cross-cultural dimension. Traditionally, the way we think about these problems uh, is obviously shaped by our own training and our own way of looking at the world. So an engineer, when faced with, a, with an ethical challenge of, you know, what should the car do or how do you make sure the car uh, doesn't misbehave, they see it as an engineering problem. Uh, but I think that can only take you so far. On the other hand, you have uh, people from the humanities who are aware of the uh, history of uh, law and regulation and who are able to uh, who have a very uh, good eye for identifying potential uh, misuse and abuse in systems and they think about uh, regulatory measures um, to mitigate systems basically going out of control. And the problem to me is, has been that these two groups have not been talking to each other. The engineers typically would ignore um, uh, the, uh, these issues because they think that, that uh, an engineering solution will fix the problem. On the other hand, uh, people coming from the humanities typically don't have the means to implement those ideas in an operational way. And uh, this is why I think uh, it's important to bridge this gap by bringing both of, both of those perspectives together.